There are many shows that I want a season two of. ReZero, Grimgar Fantasy Nash, Panting Stocking, When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace, and of course, Ori Twin Tales, plus many, many others. Though a lot of them, I don't have much hope we'll get more. Few people like them, they sold poorly, so I give up hope. One of these shows is Handshakers, a show that I'm pretty sure only about three people in the world legitimately enjoyed. Me being one of them. But much to everyone's surprise, today we learned that WZ or Wiz or however the heck you pronounce it is in fact a sequel to Handshakers, taking place 10 years after the events of Handshakers. Both anime are made by Studio Gohans, a studio known for their style, though not in a good way. They have a very unique way of presenting shows with the CG lighting and color, making it obvious that you are watching a Gohan show. While a lot of people bash them for the style, I like it. While I admit they don't always handle it well, there is a certain charm to the uniqueness. I have seen or tried over 500 different anime, and a lot of them look alike. So I enjoy shows that just have a different style to them. Yes, you could say this is bad CG, and yeah, you're kind of right there. But the badness or the difference of it is what makes it different, if that makes sense. I also love the traditional piano soundtrack. It doesn't help get me hyped like music and action shows, but just fits the whole mood. And visually, Wiz is a step up from Handshakers, with the style being a little bit more tame for the most part, and them only going all out with being themselves when they really want to accent the style, like when they go to that other world. There are times where the style is very odd, like how the girl's hair switches colors depending on the lighting and the angle, like is it blue, is it gray, is it purple? I think it's one of the first two. But again, some rules are just best broken. And yeah, this show breaks a lot of rules. Plot-wise, the first episode is mainly set up reintroducing the world or introducing it if you've not seen the original and there's a lot of time spent on Yukiya the main character of at least this season. As expected he has an abnormal power for this world. He's called an irregular handshaker whatever that means. He's given a warning when he's a kid to never hold hands with anyone and we see later on that he has the power to take himself and someone else into the handshaker's realm as I'm going to call it I don't know if it has an actual name, but whatever. Anyway, he can take them into the realm by touching hands with them, even if he doesn't mean to. And this is typically only done when a handshaker and their partner hold hands. I like that we get a lot of time getting to know him as a person. He is passionate about music. He wants to get more views on his music streams, and he's facing pushback from his father about his musical dreams. This means that we get to know him as a person, as opposed to just his powers. He doesn't seem to have any interest in being a handshaker. It's just a thing that he has to worry about. And I also like what pushes him into the action of the show is his own desires. He wants to film a cool music video, so he decides to go to the handshaker realm to do so. Because, like, have you seen it? It makes awesome AMVs, that's for sure. I also like all the mysteries surrounding Yukiya. Like, he claims to be 14, but he isn't entirely sure of his age, and we're wondering what's going on there. Like, why at the beginning is he being told that he should never hold hands with anyone? Obviously, it ties into him being an irregular, but why? What's the backstory there? Or just his Nimrod looking like the main character's Nimrod from season one? What are all the answers? This is one of the things that makes me interested in the show. And yeah, all the names for things are quite weird. So yeah, this is a unique way of throwing a main character into a conflict like this. Typically, main characters have no idea what's going on. They just get thrown in, pulled out of their ordinary lives. But here, the main guy knows what he's doing. He knows how to use his powers. He intentionally takes himself and the girl into the handshaker realm. And he knows there's a danger from other handshakers. So this really is his fault that he and the girl could be in a lot of danger. There's a bit of action at the end with him trying to get away from the other handshakers. Though not too much happens. Though he gets the signature camera movement that Gohan's action scenes tend to have. All this led to a very exciting first episode. I like the general plot of handshakers along with the style. And it feels like both of these will be improved here. So yeah, I'm interested in seeing more.
Now you might be wondering if you can get into this without seeing the original Handshakers, and it's kind of hard to say. The mechanics of the world are pretty simple, so I don't think you'd be that lost here. Plus, all the characters are new, so again, you'd be okay. Though you might be missing some things, it depends on where the story goes. So yeah, give this a try. Watch an episode or two, and then go back to Handshakers if you want. I am also really impressed that this is a sort of stealth sequel to Handshakers and how well that's working for the show's reception. Handshakers is not a popular show. And while I do like it, my excitement of hearing about a season 2 would not last long. But with it getting a season 2 and me having it right in front of me, that works. I instantly hear about the season 2, I want to see it, and I can. And the hype for wanting to see it made me really enjoy this episode more. I was just enjoying the absurdity of it actually existing. Plus the whole absurdity of the concept about holding hands and all that. So yeah, lots of absurd fun things. And the whole surprise of this is making it so there's a lot of talk about it too. On like Twitter and various discords I'm in. Handshakers was critically panned in the West and it sold horribly. So there is no way to expect any buzz from a season 2. But there is which I think is to the credit of them presenting it this way. So yeah, I have high hopes for Wiz. Maybe too high. I'm sure I'll like it because I like Handshakers, but I hope it'll be for reasons beyond just it being able to appeal to my specific weird taste, and it will be a, a show I can generally enjoy. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I wasn't planning on making the video, but then it happened, so I guess I thought it would be a good idea. I'll be talking about the year in review stuff soon, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.